In today's video, I'm going to give you three nutritional recommendations to improve your sleep. Welcome back everybody, I'm Sean LaFlock of Flock Fitness. If you are new to the channel, Flock Fitness is all about fitness, wellness, and longevity for the ageless athlete. We have everything from podcasts to product reviews, exercise tips, and nutritional tutorials like these. So if you're into that type of thing, please subscribe. In my time as both a athlete and a coach, I have tried almost every type of supplement, both over the counter and prescription, and also nutritional recommendations when it comes to improving my sleep. These are the three things that I'm doing on a consistent basis to ensure that at least I'm setting myself up for success when it comes to better sleep. First off, carbohydrates before bed. I know that there's some ambiguity when it comes to having carbs before bed because a lot of people are very phobic of maybe over consuming carbs because it thinks it makes them fat. But the thing that I have found, and there's research to support this, is that carbohydrates prior to sleep, specifically starchy carbohydrates, are gonna improve your conversion of serotonin into melatonin, the precursors toward like the hormones of sleep. So if you're very low carb later in the day and you have a hard time getting to sleep, Adding in some carbohydrates with your final meal of the day, two hours prior to going to sleep, will give you improvements in your sleep. Now, how much that is, it's dependent upon the person, but for me personally, I usually add about uh, 40 to 80 grams of carbohydrates, starchy carbohydrates, into my final meal. This could be potatoes, rice, are usually the ones that I leverage, and it gives me so much easier time getting to sleep, and I get like that sleepy feeling that I wouldn't otherwise have had I not had the carbohydrates. The second nutritional recommendation toward better sleep is ensuring that you're getting adequate amounts of salt throughout the day. When you are low in salt, it puts a stress on the body and it actually causes cortisol levels to increase. If your cortisol levels are high and you're trying to go to bed, it's very counter to the sleep process. We wanna to try to mitigate the cortisol toward later in the day. And one of the ways that you can mitigate your cortisol levels is by ensuring that you're getting enough salt into your diet. The product that I leverage is Element. Uh, it's a newer product. I'll link it below in the description. But they make a ton of different flavors and the one that I leverage best toward later in the day is the mint chocolate. I add that to about six to eight ounces of hot water and I drink it like hot cocoa. It tastes unbelievably good. It gives me the salt that I need, especially if I've been sweating in the hot Florida weather or getting tough workouts in. So it's something that's a must for me when it comes to keeping up my electrolytes throughout the day. The third nutritional recommendation that I have is making sure that I'm not overeating prior to bed. When I overeat prior to going to sleep, I usually have this heavy feeling in my stomach that actually prevents me from like getting into a relaxed state. And I know that my body is trying to work really, really hard to try and digest my food. So for me personally, I usually have my final meal at least three hours prior to going to bed and that gives me adequate time to digest the food in my system and gives me a little bit more of like an empty-ish feeling in my stomach. Now that being said, if I go too far on the opposite side of the spectrum and I don't actually eat enough, I'll have that starving sensation and usually I'm up two hours after going to sleep because my blood sugar is crashed and my adrenaline is spiked because I'm basically in a fasted, too fasted of a state and my blood sugar is dropping. These measures are fairly conservative, so my recommendation is choose one of these variables and run it for about two to four weeks and see if it gives you any type of change. If it is a positive change, keep that change in your diet, and if it doesn't really work, you can go ahead and discard it and try something else. But don't try all three of these recommendations at once because you don't know what might be happening, which one might be actually giving you positive benefits, and what potentially might be giving you some negative drawbacks toward improving your sleep. That's all I have for today, but if you like this video or you learned something, please give it a thumbs up down below. And while you're there, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date on all of our latest content. I'm Sean LaFlock of Flock Fitness. Thank you so much for watching and have an awesome day.